So a few weeks back, we released a video which talked through the ideal Brexit deals for half of the EU member nations. We ran through exactly what these countries wanted to see from a Brexit deal. If you missed it, make sure to click the link to check out part one. People have been clamouring for us to create a second part, so here it is. Before we start, I want to discuss a criticism a number of people had about the first video. Quite a few people said that talking about what individual countries wanted was a waste of time, and said that the UK is negotiating with Barnier and the EU as a whole, so it doesn't matter what the individual countries want. While this is true, it's the EU's job and the job of negotiators to act on behalf of member states. Barnier and his team are negotiating with the authority granted to them by the EU members. The negotiators were given guidelines laying out what is acceptable by the European Council, a group made up of all member nations. So even though the UK is only negotiating with one group for simplicity's sake, the EU negotiators are talking on behalf of the other 27 EU nations and making deals which match their wishes. So let's get on with the video. Today we're going to run through what the other EU nations are looking for out of a Brexit deal. When it comes to population, these countries might be smaller than the ones we discussed in the first part. But as we just discussed, when it comes to negotiations, the UK needs as many people on side as possible, so their views are also very important. So let's get started with the 15th biggest EU nation by population, Austria. Austria hold far more power in the Brexit process than you might expect. That's due to the presidency of the Council of the European Union. If you've never heard of this before, don't worry. The Council of the EU is the upper house of the EU's legislature. Every six months, the presidency changes, rotating through each of the EU nations. Often people confuse the presidency with a president. Unlike a president, presidency isn't a position held by a person, instead being held by a government. The country holding the presidency is responsible for setting work programmes, creating agendas, chairing meetings, and communicating with other EU institutions. As you probably guessed, since July 2018, the presidency has been held by Austria. They will continue holding the presidency until December 2018, meaning that they've held it through a very key time in Brexit negotiations. This increased influence over the Council of the European Union means that Austria also have increased leverage in the negotiation process. So what is Austria going to do with this leverage? What do they want out of Brexit? Well, the Austrian Chancellor, Sebastian Kurz, made his stance very clear when he said that he didn't want a hard Brexit, with Kurz even suggesting extending the negotiation period to try and prevent a cliff-edge Brexit. This determination to avoid a hard Brexit could be for a number of reasons, including security, trade and immigration. Austria is very security focused, so much so that the motto of their current EU presidency is a Europe that protects. Therefore, losing ties with the UK, one of the world's biggest military and security nations, isn't a desirable outcome for Austria. As such, the Austrian government are keen to preserve military intelligence cooperation post-Brexit. The UK is also Austria's 8th largest trading partner, so naturally that is a relationship which Austria is looking to defend. The Austrian car industry could suffer if no deal is reached, due to a collapse in the supply chains their businesses rely on. Despite the supply chain problems, Austrian manufacturers could actually benefit from there being no deal, with a number of businesses talking about moving their operations out of the UK. In fact, Fiat Chrysler have already committed to moving some of their tractor manufacturing, which previously happened in Britain, to Austria. It's not even limited to manufacturing. Other Austrian industries might also benefit from businesses leaving the UK, such as EasyJet and Ryanair's plans to move operations to Austria. A lot of countries are concerned about their citizens who live in the UK, and with 25,000 Austrians living in the UK, Austria is certainly concerned. Bulgaria is even more worried about how Brexit will affect its citizens who currently live in the UK. While we have no exact figures, it's estimated that there are between 80,000 and 100,000 Bulgarians living in the UK. And as such, you won't be entirely surprised to hear that they prefer a softer Brexit for the sake of their citizens. Bulgaria is the poorest EU nations, and it isn't part of the Euro or Schengen area. As such, any changes to the EU budget would really affect them. With the UK leaving the EU, the EU's total budget is set to decrease and other EU countries will likely be expected to contribute more to cover the deficit left by the UK. Some estimate that this would result in Bulgaria contributing 10% more to the budget each year if there's a hard Brexit. Despite this, Bulgaria's Prime Minister has been clear that the UK should not receive special status post-Brexit, and in 2017 the PM even predicted that the outcome of the process would be a hard Brexit. Denmark is a country which has historically had some fairly Eurosceptic tendencies. However, support for a Danish Brexit or Dexit has fallen out of favour recently as a result of how, well, poorly negotiations have been going for the UK at the moment. 
The Danish establishment are very keen to ensure that the UK doesn't get too good a deal, as a cushy Brexit deal might encourage the Dexit sentiment. Fishing has always been a controversial issue in Brexit, with many Brits complaining about the access that EU nations have to UK waters. Denmark is one of the countries which Brexiteers regularly complain about most, as almost a third of the Danish catch comes from UK waters. Fishing is a major industry in Denmark, and as such the fishing industry has a lot of political clout. Therefore, the Danish government will be very keen to see the deal that was reached between the UK and EU ensure that Danish fishermen can continue having access to UK waters. For the first time in TLDR history, let's talk about sperm. Yes, I did have to create a graphic for sperm, it's not exactly one we already had on file. Around 50% of the sperm that's used in the UK comes from Denmark. I'll give you a second to take that in. You're used to hearing about the UK government stocking up on food and medicines, but stocking up on sperm could be a bit of a shock. And while it might sound like a bit of a joke, this is a serious concern after Brexit. Sperm from Denmark is regularly used by British couples trying to conceive, as well as for scientific research. So both groups would be seriously impacted if Danish sperm got stuck in customs checks. Finland has quite an unusual attitude towards Brexit. Some countries are in favour of a hard Brexit, some are in favour of something softer, and others are annoyed that it's happening at all. Finland, well, Finland is fairly apathetic. Traditionally, the UK has been a very important trading partner for Finland. However, over time that's shifted, with the UK falling from being the second largest export destination to being sixth today. This change is so significant that the Finnish government officially commented they used to be more important. Finland is global now. This is why the Finns are generally less engaged with Brexit. The UK simply isn't that important to them in the modern era, with the country exporting as much to China as they do to the UK. The same Finnish official said that the country wouldn't be getting majorly involved with the negotiations process, as they don't have any special requirements. Instead, he said that their special special wish is that there is unity among the EU27. Slovakia, like many other EU nations, is concerned about how Brexit will impact their finances. The UK is currently a net contributor to the EU, meaning that they pay more into the EU budget than they receive back from the EU. We could talk all day about the other benefits the UK is getting from being an EU member and if they outweigh the cost of membership, but the maths is simple. The UK puts more into the EU budget than it takes out, and as such, when they leave, there'll be a shortfall in the EU's budget. Slovakia is a net recipient from the EU, meaning they receive more from the EU budget than they put in. This means they're currently benefiting from countries like the UK who are net contributors. As such, the Slovakian government aren't keen to see a major contributor like the UK leave from all budget contributions. Add to that, there are around 8,000 Slovaks living in the UK, and Slovakia is predicted to be the second biggest loser from tariffs. It's safe to say that Slovakia wants to protect their citizens living in the UK and their goods exported to the UK, which represent about 5% of their total exports. Therefore, Slovakia aren't the biggest fan of Brexit and would like to avoid the UK from going too far away. Ireland is such a big deal when it comes to Brexit. After all, Ireland is the only EU country which shares a land border with the UK. So because Ireland is so important, we've discussed the Northern Ireland-Ireland border on multiple occasions, as well as discussing how Ireland will be impacted by Brexit. If you want us to dive into what Ireland's ideal Brexit deal looks like, then like this video and comment below, and we'll make a standalone video on that topic another day. Like Slovakia, Croatia doesn't love Brexit. The Croatian Prime Minister commented that Brexit was a lose-lose-lose situation and their president said that she favoured a softer form of Brexit. This attitude is based in security concerns. As we've discussed before, the UK is a major player, both in terms of military and security. Therefore, Croatia is concerned about the UK moving too far away from the EU, and the UK therefore being less aligned with Croatian interests. Croatia is certainly worried about the Turkish and Russian encroachment on the region, and without the UK, the EU is slightly less well placed to defend them. Lithuania is concerned by a number of things post-Brexit, but they are common problems, so covering them shouldn't take too long. Lithuania joins a long list of countries who have a lot of citizens living in the UK. Around 200,000 Lithuanians currently live in the UK, and a number of these citizens might face difficulties post-Brexit. Lithuania is a net recipient of EU funding, meaning that they'll lose out if the EU budget falls. As such, they want to secure future financial commitments from the UK. Lithuania is also concerned about security, 
Like other Eastern European nations, Lithuania has concerns about Russia and believes that a united Europe is a good thing. While you're familiar with these concerns by now, they do still mean a lot. These common threads illustrate the points which are most key to EU nations, and shows that these countries will want to work together to ensure they can get what they want. One more unique thing about Lithuania is they have ambitions of becoming a fintech hub after Brexit. With the UK-EU relationship likely weakened after Brexit, Lithuania sees this as the ideal opportunity to step in and become more competitive in the field. Slovenia has similar goals to Slovakia. They're trying to draw companies away from a less competitive UK. Slovenia's technology minister recently invited British companies to get involved in privatisation of state-owned companies in Slovenia and has been explicit about wanting to attract British investors. Slovenia is hoping that the UK's weakened links to the EU will make British businesses and investors choose to move to an EU country and benefit from staying within the bloc. So Slovenia is trying to place itself as the ideal country for EU companies to move to. Slovenia is another country who wants to see the EU budget protected, a stance which is unsurprising considering the nation is a net beneficiary. However, their Deputy Prime Minister is a bit of a Eurosceptic, believing that the EU needs reform, so potentially his government will be looking to punish the UK a little less than other nations. Strap in, you've heard all of this before, so this section is going to be fast. There are 80,000 Latvians living in the UK, so the country wants to ensure protections for these people. Latvia is a net recipient of the EU budget, so they'd like to maintain financial commitments from the UK. In fact, Latvia's finance minister has explicitly said that they don't want reductions in the EU-wide cohesion fund. The Latvian ambassador to the UK has expressed concerns about Russia and would like to maintain military cooperation with the UK. Estonia has these same concerns about citizens losing funding from the EU and being worried about Russian expansion. They also, like other countries, are trying to attract media and tech companies away from the UK, with the Director General of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Estonia pitching Estonia as the ideal place for EU broadcasters to relocate, as historically the UK has been an unofficial hub for EU broadcasting. In possibly the most interesting high-tech and entrepreneurial move, Estonia has been offering Estonian e-residency to British nationals who want to remain in the EU. If you want to hear us talk about how UK citizens can remain in the EU as an Estonian EU resident, comment below and like this video and we might make that video soon. Cyprus has a very close connection with the UK and as such they're looking for a very soft form of Brexit. Cyprus gained independence from the UK in 1960, meaning that the two continue to have residual cultural and economic ties. Britain is one of the top destinations for both Cypriot students headed to university and for Cypriot exports. But it works the other way around too, with around 65,000 British expats living in Cyprus and British military bases covering about 1% of all Cypriot land. Tourists from the UK also enjoy visiting Cyprus, with the tourism sector representing about 10% of Cyprus's GDP much of that coming from Brits. Due to these incredibly close connections, it's not surprising that Cyprus is looking to see a very soft form of Brexit, which allows the nation to remain close to the UK longer term. Despite having a small population compared to other EU nations, Luxembourg is known as a popular place to operate your business from. This is likely due to their very favourable tax laws, with many even describing the nation as a tax haven. There's been a certain amount of discussion about the UK becoming a tax haven to attract businesses after Brexit. The problem for the UK is that they likely won't have free access to the EU's markets post-Brexit. Luxembourg, on the other hand, has favourable tax laws and access to the EU, so many in the country are hoping that they might be able to attract some of the companies who are leaving the UK. This is especially key when you consider how important the UK's financial sector is. London is one of the world's largest financial hubs and big businesses are talking about leaving London due to Brexit. Luxembourg is hoping to attract some of those people. To capitalise on this, Luxembourg are hoping for a hard Brexit, especially in relation to finances, in the hope that this pushes business out of London and to Luxembourg. Like Cyprus, Malta has very close ties to the UK. Malta is a member of the British Commonwealth and is a former colony, so there's a long-standing relationship between the two countries. Despite this, Malta sees Brexit as an opportunity to grow their small nation. To criticise countries like Luxembourg and Malta for wanting to attract businesses away from the UK feels weird to me. It's only logical that these countries want to make the most of the opportunities that Brexit presents. And if Brexit means they can grow, why wouldn't they? 
I fail to see that the UK wouldn't do exactly the same thing if they thought they could take businesses from another country. And that's it. We've now talked our way through what every EU nation is looking for out of a Brexit deal. A number of people have messaged us saying that they want to hear what important non-EU nations want from Brexit. Places like the US, Switzerland and Norway. If you'd be interested in a video like that, give this video a like and comment below the nations you'd like to hear us discuss. If you want to be notified when those videos come out and want to get more news and Brexit information, subscribe to TLDR News.